All right, good morning, I'm Mike, um, and this is my 1972 Corvette restoration project. Um, the chassis is sitting here uh, waiting. I've got the suspension rebuilt, and the engine I have sent off, uh, contrary to my original plans, I decided while I had it out to send it to an engine overhauler, and uh, they're honing out the cylinders and, and uh, doing all that good stuff inside, which is really beyond my skill level and uh, uh, available tools to me. So um, while we're waiting for the engine to come back, I am gonna start doing some work on the body. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is uh, try to fix the nose portion. So we'll take a look at that. I have to say, I have a helper this morning. Her name is Eva and, and uh, she's doing a great job and it makes it a little easier for me to point some of this stuff out. Um, What's going on here on the nose is there's a header bar, a headlight he header bar that's built, uh, that's bonded to the fiberglass and it has um, rivets in it. And I, as I understand it, these rivets over the years corrode and they expand. And if you can see it, we're not sure that'll show up really good in a video or not, but there's little bulges all the way around here. Um, I've read that some people like those because it proves that it's the original paint. Um, I don't like them and I'm repainting the car anyways. So the header bar, the rusty header bar is coming out and um, we're gonna put a new one in. So uh, today we're gonna start the process of removing the headlights and uh, all of the electrical and pneumatic connections for that. And then um, we might get as far as tearing the header bar out today. All right, so I should also add that um, I haven't found much on YouTube about replacing the header bar. And uh, so um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to do this more step-by-step -step, um, than some of my other videos. Uh, hopefully uh, down the road, this is helpful to somebody else with a similar situation. Okay, here we are inside the engine bay. And you can see the, uh, the vacuum hoses and the actuators. So the first step I'm gonna do is label these hoses and wires. The wiring harnesses are getting replaced. I'm not sure about the vacuum hoses, probably, but we'll see what condition they're in. And so I'm gonna label everything carefully, take a lot of pictures, so I get it all back together right, hopefully. And, um, uh, and then we'll tear it apart. All right, so I've uh, pulled off the wire harness. You can kind of see it here. Uh, for the headlights and uh, that's you know ripped out the horn as well um, so that's really uh, making it open for me to to see all the vacuum hoses where everything's going and to get them properly labeled um, I've also pulled out the actual headlamps and the bezels all that stuff to make the wiring all come out easier that's where we're at I'm going to try and uh, track these various vacuum hoses for you. Um, coming down from the vacuum source, we've got two large ones, and they they attach into what I think are some sort of vacuum relay. So um, on the left, we've got this one with a green stripe. I'm not sure if it's original or not, but it's going to the middle or the yellow tab, and the other large diameter hose is going to the right again to the middle tab and my colors are off of that one out of the top of each of those relays we have a similar diameter hose that's going to the back side of the actuator and that's on each side and then the bottom hose is going to the front side of the actuator in each case and then back to our source, we have a small diameter hose that's coming up, going into a T, and then uh, each side of that T goes into the top of, again, what I think is a vacuum relay of some sort. And my relays look really kind of grody, so I think I'm gonna replace those. All right, I have all the vacuum lines um, and the various connections, relays out of the way, wiring out of the way. 
and now I'm going to attack the actual um, headlamp caddies and I believe there's five screws you see three of them right there on the top side and it might be hard to see but it looks like there's two on the, on the very nose on the on the bottom side so they're coming out next and uh, then I think we have everything off of the header bar all right the flip up headlight assemblies are out here they are they were bolted uh, three spots at the top here to that header bar and then two more spots so a total of five bolts on each one uh, the lower bolts hook into uh, the lower part of the nose here is the old header bar and if you look these little rivets are the ones that i believe corroded on the top side and are causing the fiberglass to bulge so the next step will be um, to grind these off and then get the header bar loose and out and then replaced um, i did find something on the internet as by wilcox i'll try to make a shot of that later um, and it's kind of some step-by-step -step directions on, on how to do this. Okay, so I mentioned that I'm following directions uh, from an article I got off the internet by Wilcox Corvette. Wilcox with two L's. I'm sure you can Google that and find that. Uh, the next step, according to them, to do is to make cuts on this header bar right along this bend and on the, the backside bend and essentially cut the header bar into three pieces. Um, if I understand them right, the section that's riveted on each side is going to remain with the car at this point. And then we're going to work on separating that from the bonding panel. So that's coming up next. Okay, so the Wilcox uh, instructions say to actually cut the header bar into chunks along the, the front edge, uh, the back edge and the front edge. Um, so I've started doing that. Not pretty, not really easy. It's going to get a little bit tight down in here. So I'm actually going to pull out these support brackets first so I can get back in there closer with the angle grinder. No more cutting to do. It's out. It's a little stubborn, but this is what we got now. And according to Wilcox, the next step is to get a uh, bent scraper, heavy scraper, and to separate the rest of the header bar from the uh, bonding strip. So I guess I'm gonna go and figure out what I have for a scraper. All right, so I'm using this scraper. Um, I just did a couple so far. It's worked really well, actually. About the camera movement. Um, so I'm going right above the steel header underneath the bonding strip, and it's uh, slicing right through the rivets. Okay, the header bar is completely out. Um, the rivets, the top of the rivets still are still in there, so I'll have to dig those out next. So this would be the underside of the bonding strip.
and above that lays the surround panel. All right, we're back. Uh, the next task is to remove the rivets or the heads of the rivets. And as you can see, I've gotten one out. This is how I'm doing it. I got a Dremel tool with kind of a flat disc end on it. Um, I just went up there and started very carefully grinding. I'm being careful to remove the bonding strip and expose the head. There's the head of the rivet that I took out um, without going into the surround panel. Um, so anyway, I'm gonna try to film that process so you can see one in action. So the first two are out. I uh, haven't uh, made contact really with the outer surround panel, which I'm very happy about. There are the heads that I've removed. Uh, looks like I have about 28 more to do. And it's gonna be a lot tougher when I get back into the corner to get at them. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna pull that off. So the uh, the, the hole that I'm leaving here is about the size of a dime. All right, mission accomplished. I got them all removed. Uh, the Dremel tool worked fantastic for doing this. There's 36 of them. Uh, and I don't believe I popped through. I don't believe I ever even really struck the uh, surround panel. So I'll show you the front side. View from the top side. I was really nervous about accidentally popping through, creating a hole. Thank goodness that didn't happen. And I think what I'm noticing already is that the fiberglass is already laying smoother with the rivet heads gone. Uh, and I'm hoping that gets even better once I use epoxy and uh, adhere the header bar back up there and clamp it down for a few days. That's the next step. All right, what I'm gonna do next is uh, to glue the header in place underneath the surround panel. So I've mocked up these pieces of wood and be putting a bunch of clamps on there once I had the adhesive on. So the Wilcox instructions call for scuffing up the header before you put the adhesive on actually both surfaces, uh, so that'd be the bonding surface as well. Uh, so that's what I'm doing here. I'm feeling like the bonding surface is not real smooth. I think there's uh, plenty of roughness there for the adhesive to bite into, uh, but I am just taking a rag to it and cleaning all the dust off to get that out of the way. It doesn't interfere with our adhesive at all. I think we're ready to Stick it up in there. All right, I've got the epoxy on the header bar and we're about to install it. The header bar is in place. I uh, lined it up by eye uh, with the existing bonding strip you can kind of tell where the old one sat, so the best I could possibly line it up. 
and then I clamp the hell out of it because um, I really want those dimples to be gone when we're finished with this project. So here it is from the underside. And here it is from the top side. So I cut these pine boards to just the right width, which I believe is five and seven eighths. So now I'm just going to let it sit for a few days and cure. Hello again. So uh, we're back. I've taken off all the clamps uh, after it cured for about a week. The cure time for the epoxy uh, is supposed to be 24 hours, but I needed to go out of town. So um, I let it sit the entire time and I'm pretty pleased with the result. At this point, you can, I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but you can barely see bulges and, you know, we haven't done any sanding, obviously, yet. I'm pretty confident that when the car goes for, uh, to be repainted and gets sanded down, um, that they'll be able to sand that much out and uh, they'll be completely gone. I'll show you the underside. And here is the underside. Next steps are going to be to uh, clean up the headlight assemblies, lubricate them, get those back in, um, do some cleanup underneath here, and uh, get everything rehung. All right, we're back. So I've uh, taken the headlight assemblies apart, and I ordered a rebuilt kit. Um, and I think that was a little overboard. I actually think I could have just purchased the springs and the bushings and probably saved some money, but um, that's water under the bridge now. So anyways, I've reassembled this one already. So I knew what I was doing uh, before I took a video and it all worked out pretty nicely. Um, both of the actuators, I think they were replaced by the previous owner. I don't think they're that old. Um, and the boots are good and, and uh, they hold a vacuum in both directions. So there's nothing really to be done with those. They're fine. So I'm going to reassemble this thing. And uh, then we'll get these babies reinstalled into the car. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is reassemble these two components together this pin this is the old bushing it's going to get tossed and the new bushing that came with the kit so I'm just and I'll add a little grease to this as well I have to set the camera down do this with two hands all right this piece is these two pieces are attached assembled with the pin and now I'm going to mount them onto this bracket. Uh, before I took it apart, I took a picture. So that I could see exactly where it was positioned with these slots. And if I show you on the one that's already assembled, this is what I'm talking about. So you see that gap right there. Uh, what I want to do is reassemble it and have it in the exact same spot that it was so that hopefully when I put everything back into the body, the alignment is very close. All right, so that's all back together. This is all working nice and freely. Um, basically cleaning up these pins and bolts and everything, new bushings. It, it, my intention is to uh, make everything work really freely again and uh, seem to be accomplishing that. All right, now I'm gonna marry these two major pieces back together. Um, so I've cleaned up these shafts. They had 50 years of corrosion on them. And this is the old bushing bracket, one of them that was on there. Here are the new ones that came with the kit. I'm gonna pop those onto there. Really, that's backwards onto there like that. 
on each side and then slide it into the bracket and then we'll bolt it in. Sorry, I had to set the camera down to uh, use two hands to get that one to go all the way in. All right, now we're gonna install the actuator. So again, I've checked out the boot that's actually underneath this boot and uh, it's in good shape. No need to replace it. Don't forget to put these support brackets on. Okay, those bolts are all tightened down. This is all working really nice and freely. I don't have the actuator connected yet. That's the kind of the final step. We're gonna stick this pin right there. And then we should be, put the springs on and then we'll be assembled. So it gets these little plastic pieces. Classic bushing goes right here. Sorry, this is hard to do one handed on the camera at the same time. It's through there. And now we gotta drop on this washer and cotter pin. That shaft's in place with the washer and the cotter pin. I got the two inner springs hooked on. Now I'm putting on these two outer springs and the bottom part mounts or hooks into this bracket from the inside out. And I just gotta pull that up to that shaft. Same thing on the other side, that's next. All right, so um, I've had the headlight assemblies in and what I found is I had to make some adjustments to make the gaps right and uh, so that the doors don't drag on the edges. So taking it apart and putting it back together, uh, rebuilt, um, adjusted uh, where everything sat. So anyways, there's these collars right here that you can move a little bit. So that will give you left to right adjustment then where these um, pivoting bushings sit as you can see there in the center you there's a lot of the, there are oversized holes for the three bolts and um and there's quite a bit of wiggle room there so that's uh two adjustments the third one is how far the door closes and that's controlled by this bolt right here this is the bottom side of it but Try to get a good shot. All right, there it is. You can see the head of it. And as that comes down, it sits on the bracket right there. So if you adjust that in or out, that will adjust how far the door is actually close. The headlights are back in and I've adjusted them. Put it down manually. So I think I've got the gaps as good as they're gonna go, as good as I can get them. I'm pretty happy with them. Um, that one's hanging up, a little, or it's sticking up a little bit. Maybe I can still tweak that. So I took these things out and rebuilt them with the body off the frame, obviously, and no engine in the way. Um, 
this was this was not easy. These things are awkward, and getting them in and out uh, wasn't a lot of fun and, and properly lined up. So uh, I'd say only do it if you have to. All right, I think I've got it all back together. I got a few vacuum lines to better secure tie up. Um, but everything's hooked up, uh, but not the vacuum, so I can't really test it. But uh, I think this project's done. Thanks for watching.